Hi guys, Larry Feldman again. In this lesson, we're going to write a Python program to implement uh, compounding interest equations based upon the pseudocode that we wrote um, in this class. And I just wanted to go over the pseudocode real quick. So a uh, notice, as, as usual, we, we use the word start. And then the first thing we do is we tell the user to enter one or two so that we know whether we're using continuous or non-continuous compounding. So let's go back to our program. And as usual, we start idle, and then we enter uh, a few comments. We want the title of the program, the author, and the date, which I've already filled in, as you can see. Next, we want to import a couple libraries so that we can take advantage of code that has already been supplied by Python. We're going to import math and sys. And then we want to create a variable called cType, which is compounding type. And let's go to our pseudocode real quick. cType is going to be the one or the two that the user enters. One meaning continuous compounding and two that means non-continuous compounding. So let's say cType equals integer uh, parenthesis then input enter one for continuous compounding or enter two for non-continuous quote two parentheses and then we go to the next line. And let's just uh, put a colon there and, and a space here. Um, this will make the program look a little bit nicer when it runs. Then we want to check for, in, check for an invalid input here. In other words, we expect C-type to be 1 or 2. What happens if the user enters something other than that, like a 3 or a 4? Well, that's going to be an invalid input. So we say if C type is not equal to 1, or C type is not equal to 2, colon, print invalid input. And then we end the program with this command, sys.exit. And actually, this has to be an and. In other words, c-type uh, cannot equal 1, or if c-type is not equal to 1 and c-type is not equal to 2, we're going to say that we have an invalid input, and then we're going to exit the program. Okay, now let's assume that the user inputs a 1. So in this block of code we're going to handle continuous compounding. And let's look at our pseudocode real quick. If C type equals 1 we need to get our inputs, uh, test for uh, positive inputs, and then calculate the amount. P equals or excuse me, a equals p times e to the rt. So let's uh, let's check that if c type equals one. Now we know that we have continuous compounding. Okay, let's uh, get our inputs. So let's say p equals float input. Enter the principal. R equals float input enter the annual interest rate in decimal T equals float input enter the time in years Okay, 
Okay, now let's check for valid inputs. If P is less than or equal to zero, or R is less than or equal to zero, or T is less than or equal to zero, we have a problem because those values all have to be positive. So we print all inputs must be positive. And then we exit the program. However, if the inputs are valid, now we can calculate the final amount which is p times e to the rt. So we have p times, and remember we have to use math.e for the uh, constant, raised to the r times t power. And then we print final amount equals amount. That should take care of the continuous compounding case. Now let's look at the non-continuous case. At this stage, we say if C type equals 2, and let's uh, just copy and paste this we're going to be using a lot of it as is we will be changing a few things but we still have principal rate and time and we need to add n which is the number of times the interest is compounded per year And we also want to add to this section where we test for valid inputs um, the case where n is less than or equal to 0 because that, that should also trigger an error message. And our equation changes here. It's not a equals pert anymore. It's a equals p times 1 plus r over n raised to the n times t power. Let's check our pseudocode real quick. We're down here. If c type equals 2, we input four uh, values. We test to make sure that they're all positive, and then we just implemented this equation here. So let's go back to our code. Let's uh, let's save it, Command S, and let's run it and see how it works. So we get the shell as usual. Let's first test some error conditions. Let's let's say we enter three, we get invalid input, which is good. Go come back to the PY uh, program. Run it again. Let's enter 1. We're now uh, doing continuous compounding. So it asks for the principal. Let's enter $1,000. Enter the annual interest rate. Let's put negative 0.04. Enter the time in years. Let's put 6. Now we should get an error here because we used a negative input. And we do get the error message. All inputs must be positive. Let's close that. Run it again. Try that. Let's try one again. One thousand point oh four at four percent for five years. This says the final amount is twelve twenty one point four roughly. So that sounds reasonable. We started with a thousand dollars. After five years, we end up with uh, twelve hundred twenty one dollars roughly. Now let's um, 
let's run this again and try non-continuous compounding. We have the principal, the interest rate, number of years, and the number of times the interest is compounded per year. Let's say 12. We get 1220.9965, etc. Also seems reasonable. Um, if you compound continuously, all other factors being equal, you'll end up with a higher amount. Um, let's run that again. Let's try uh, non-continuous compounding again. Thousand dollars, point oh four, five years. Let's compound it once per year. Twelve sixteen point six five roughly. Again, the, the, the more often you compound interest per year, the higher the final amount, all other factors being equal. So we ended up with roughly $4 more at the end of five years by compounding 12 times per year versus once a year. So that's a good sign. And typically, when you're writing a, a program, you'll want to check these values with the calculator first. And also be sure to check um, a lot of your error conditions. So, you know, we already checked for an invalid input at this stage, but I don't think I checked for a negative principle yet. So let's try that. We get the error message, all inputs must be positive. Let's run it again. Put a 1 here. Let's try... Four thousand dollars, point oh five time in years, let's say is negative six. So again we get an error message. Actually, let me close this so that we can start at the top again. Let's try uh, non continuous compounding. Thousand dollars, point oh five, uh, two years. Number of times interest is compounded per year. Let's try zero there. Again, we get an error message. And typically, you would want to check every possible case for both continuous and non-continuous compounding. In other words, you want to check for uh, er you want to make sure that you get an error message that all inputs must be positive by testing. Um, for zero and negative numbers for all the inputs, principal, rate, time, and n. And, um, you know, obviously testing is a very important part of writing software. And after you go through all the cases, then you should have more confidence that, that your software is, is bug free. That's it for now, and uh, I will talk to you next time. Thanks.